I think Monty at times is possessed. A lot of people were creeped out. I was accused of making a pact with the devil. My ghost story started when I stumbled upon a bag of black and white film sitting on a sidewalk in Hollywood. My producer said, my God, you know, Monty, we've just been talking about your passion of making a silent film. Well, here's the film. We shot it in one day. I never would have imagined that an $800 film would win the grand prize in a worldwide competition. I was totally blown away. The night I met Alex Monty, um, he had won an award for a short film. So I gave him the idea of making, uh, you know, Return to Babylon into a feature film. The story of this movie is all of these people that did make it big, their lives ended tragically. Be it they committed suicide in a madhouse or in jail. My character, Lupe, was Latina, and she was like the first one that made it here. Lupe Velez was a spitfire, you know. She drove uh, her man crazy, and everybody would leave her. So she took a lot of pills, committed suicide. I play Mabel Norman in The Birth of Babylon. She was one of the most famous actresses of the silent era who died of a disease at a young age. It was such a difficult job to be working on such a small budget. I don't know where the money would come from, but we wanted to keep things as historically accurate as possible. We shot at these places, these houses that were very old Hollywood, and they were very spooky. I felt my energy sucked out. There was a, a frantic feeling. You know, when you, somebody touches you and, you, you go, and there's nobody around you, that's, that's an eerie feeling. Actors did uh, get goosebumps. You know, they felt like, like, like cold breaths passing by, and some of them heard certain noises. It's like, OK, we're freaking out. It was very, very strange and very weird. When Jennifer Tilly playing Clara Bow, said, I feel spirits, and they're touching me. Well, I took it really like a grain of salt. I didn't realize that this was being talked about, that there's some weird thing going on. Monty says he was not cognizant of all these paranormal feelings that people were having. A lot of people were creeped out, and though Monty does not realize it, he became frantic. I saw an evolution in this personality, being eccentric and crazy a bit. I don't think he was aware that he was being, I guess we could say the word, possessed. He doesn't realize it. And all of a sudden, Monty calls me and says, Maria, Maria, you got to see this. Is there devils here? And I'm like, what are you talking about, Monty? So then he shows me the pieces of different actors. And we are, for a second, we are somebody else. And in my character, Lupe, you know, I mean, I have this beard. The bearded man is not Maria Conchita Alonso. I think Maria had trouble with it. Said, what have we tapped into here? She was a little bit freaked out. People say, oh, come on, you know, you did that post-production. We haven't finished the movie because we need more money. We're not gonna spend whatever money we have to finish the movie into doing this, you know? I mean, this really happened. And why, I have no idea. There's one image of me where I'm hollow. I look like a skeleton. Morgan had morphed into kind of this amphibian kind of character. And it really freaked me out. At that moment, they've captured an essence of something else. Some people thought this was definitely the work of the devil. I was accused of making a pact with the devil. You've got these frames per second, and the characters are morphing. OK, could it be hair on the lens? Could it be dirt on the lens? There's got to be some logical explanation. When you look at the frame of the film, it's not affecting the art design. It's not affecting the chair, the background. It's affecting the actors, and the actors are moving from frame to frame. 
the talent that this higher force is creating is so powerful and accurate that they can trace the actor's movements. When did this morphing take place? Did it take place at the moment the film was exposed on the set? Or did it happen in the lab process? I would imagine that it happened right away. When you examine the frame of Devorah as Mary, she clearly becomes Lon Chaney as the Phantom of the Opera. Without question, you put the original film still of Lon Chaney and you side by side it, put it together, everyone says that's Lon Chaney. He has to utilize one of his most famous expressions so he could be recognized. I never would have imagined that the spirits would manifest in the film. These silent movie people want to be loved. They want to be remembered. I mean, talk about a director who never gets bored of his dailies. We are hallucinating the same thing? That can't be possible. When it actually shows up on a negative, how does that happen? There's a lot of specialists that looked into that, and it can't be explained. This could not have happened without the help of the other side. Unless somebody burns the movie forever, I will be connected to the creepy images. The special effects credit goes to, I'm not sure, is it Rudy Valentino and gang? I mean, who is it? I think it's something that should be investigated. I had problems with religious groups saying this was the work of the devil, and they did scare me because out of all the filmmakers in this world, the silent movie entities came to me.